Switzerland, officially the Swiss Confederation, is a landlocked country located at the confluence of Western, Central and Southern Europe. Capital punishment is forbidden in Switzerland by Article 10, Paragraph 1 of the Swiss Federal Constitution. Capital punishment was abolished from federal criminal law in 1942, but remained available in military criminal law until 1992. The last actual executions in Switzerland took place during World War II. On the 21st of December 1937, the Federal Assembly of Switzerland adopted the first National Criminal Code. It abolished capital punishment, which had been provided for by several cantonal criminal codes. The new code was ratified by referendum on 3 July 1938 and entered into force on 1 January 1942. Swiss military law, however, still provided for the death penalty for treason and certain other military offenses such as desertion in the face of the enemy. During World War II, 30 people were sentenced to death, and 17 of these were executed before the end of the war. This law was abolished by the Federal Assembly on the 20th of March 1992 after a parliamentary initiative by Massimo Pini of the Free Democratic Party of Switzerland. The 1999 Swiss Federal Constitution then banned the death penalty at the constitutional level. The last person to be sentenced to death by a civil court and executed was Hans Wallenweider, convicted of three murders and then executed on the 18th of October 1940 in Sarnen, Obwalden. Because of the impending abolition, Wallenweider's verdict performed with a guillotine borrowed from Lucerne, was controversial. Wallenweider was born in Zurich on the 11th of February 1908. In the Seefeld district of Zurich, a man who would go on to make criminal history was born. His youth was not exactly rosy. His family's economic problems began when he was eight years old. His father had lost a lucrative job. After graduating, Hans apprenticed as an accountant in Zurich and worked for the company until 1933, when the company fired him due to the economic crisis in Switzerland. Wallenweider invests his savings in a village cinema on Lake Constance. He is particularly fond of crime films. He has a soft spot for the villain from the movie, but sales are also weak. In April 1934 he therefore had to declare bankruptcy. But Hans doesn't want to end up as his father, who is dependent on social welfare. But as a loner, Wallenweider was increasingly marginalized, his value system tilts when a colleague thought of robbing the bank in Butch Will. The Zurcher did it for real in 1935. The robbery fails, the perpetrator manages to escape without being recognized. In 1934, Hans Wallenweider first came into conflict with the law and had to pose in front of the police. He was imprisoned for 14 days for immoral public acts. In 1936, he committed a bank robbery and was sentenced to 2.5 years in prison. He remained incarcerated after his sentence was over, because he was considered dangerous. One day he was able to escape, Hans takes the train to Zurich, steals 500 francs from his parents and plans to flee to Germany. He buys weapons and devises a plan to get a new identity card. He looks for a single driver in an ad and finds an unemployed man who looks at least remotely like him. And after nine days he was captured on the 23rd of June 1939. In these nine days, he had shot the driver Hermann Zwissig, and then he threw the body into the lake of Zug. Then the postman Emil Stoll, 
On June 19, Hans Wallenweiger planned the attack on a Zurich postman and carried it out the next day, around 8 in the morning. He came out of his hiding place and approached him, put the gun to his chest and told him to stay calm. He threatened to shoot him if he didn't hand him the bag of money. When Emil Stoll insults Wallenweiger, he pulls the trigger and flees to Lucerne in his stolen dark blue Plymouth. Stoll the postman dies instantly. And then he killed policeman Alois von Moos. Wallenweiger learns of a job at the Hotel Engel in Sachseln and gets hired as a porter of Hermann Zwissig. His mistake, he writes to a laundry in Zurich, where he has left two bloody shirts, asking to be sent to such cell. The laundry informs the Zurich police, who in turn contact Alois von Moos. The such village policeman has to get to the bottom of the matter. Von Moos is nervous. The 23-year-old policeman picks up his sleeping daughter once again and takes up the revolver to go arrest Wallenweiger. At the hotel, he consults with the master before going to Wallenweiger's room. Von Moos goes to Zwissig on the 23rd of June and asks him for shirts. Wallenweiger said he knew nothing about it. A scuffle ensues. The policeman slips to the ground and a shot is fired. The host and a guest manage to overpower Wallenweiger. Von Moos is taken to the hospital with a gunshot injuries to the stomach, where the young policeman later died. After the arrest, Wallenweiger leads the police to Lake Zug, where Zwissig's body is recovered. He speaks as if the murder had still taken place in the canton of Zurich, where, unlike Sug the death penalty, has already been abolished on a cantonal basis. He then moves the crime scene to Langno. But while still trying to clarify the first two murders, Sarnan Canton of Walden, the prosecutor solved the case in a short time, accusing Wallenweider of the murder of a policeman. The trial begins in September 1940. The prosecution asks for the death penalty. Wallenweiger had bought weapons to evade arrest and had used them with premeditation and deliberation. After being held in several prisons in different cantons, the cantonal court of Obwalden sentenced him to death on the 19th of September 1940. Hans Wallenweider's appeal and a request for clemency were rejected. One month later, on the morning of the 18th of October 1940, Hans Wallenweider was executed in Sarnen in the workshop of the prison, with a guillotine borrowed from Lucerne. Wallenweider refused to say his last words and neither eat his last meal he also refused a spiritual support. It was just after two in the morning when they bring Hans Wallenweider outside his cell at Sarner Jail. Blindfolded, he is led to a nearby barn, which is clad in black cloth. Waiting for Wallenweider are two Protestant pastors, a doctor and two chancellors, and an executioner. The executioner places Wallenweider's head under the notorious guillotine of Lucerne. He fixes the guillotine and unlocks the blade, which is four meters high, which plunges down, killing the 32-year-old instantly. It was the last time that justice took the life of a Swiss. In 1874 the state had put a stop to the killings, but in 1879 they were authorized again. Then, on July 3, 1938, the people voted for the abolition of capital punishment. But it will take effect only with the entry into force of the new penal code and so the canton of Obwalden, where the law was rejected by almost 80% of voters. Thank you for watching Death Row.